friends, welcome to See Our First Kids Big City Studio Online. As we are continuing our series, Power Promises. So glad you could join us. We're gonna go ahead and let Miss Katie introduce today's lesson. Hey kids, welcome back to our series where we're learning all about the promises in the Bible that God gives to us. So I have a question for you before we get started. Have you ever tried to break a habit? Maybe you leave your dirty laundry all over the house and it just drives your mom nuts. Or you leave the light on in your room and your dad says to you all the time, turn that light off when you leave. You're wasting energy and money. Or the, I used to get told this one all the time when I was a kid because I like to cross my eyes. I got told by older people in my life, don't cross your eyes, they'll stay that way. You know, we can try really hard to break habits. And Jesus can bring freedom from some of our sinful habits. So let's check out this video to learn how we can do that. My name is Jack Hammer and I love power tools. I love them so much that I invited my little bro Sledge over to help me make a little something today. How you doing, bro? Well, to be honest, Jack, it's kind of hot in here. Yeah, sorry about that. Wouldn't it be cool if there was some kind of machine that could recycle the air and make it like cool inside of the residence? You mean an air conditioner? A what? Seriously? An air conditioner does that. It cools your house. This is news to me, bro. Jack, it's that big thing you have on the side of your house. No, no, bro. That's for your flow. Huh? You know, your flow. That machine out back makes it nice and soft. Hair conditioner. Hair conditioner does that. Have you been sticking your head in the air conditioner again, Jack? No. <laughs> So what's the plan for today, Jack? I'm glad you asked. We got a big project today, little boo-boo. Don't call me that. Today we are assembling an outdoor recreational leisure set for a local VIP. Patio furniture? Yeah, it's for my wife for breaking the air conditioner. Right, now that we have all the parts out and ready to go, it's time to assemble it. Says here it should take about 60 minutes to complete. Ha! <laughs> I think it'll take about 10. Two hours later. Let's just double check these instructions. Ah, here we go. After you separate part C, Jack, move part D to the opposite side of part M. Jack! Huh? Why are you screaming the instructions? Oh, I always do that, so everyone can hear. Who's everyone? I don't know, but they're out there. Opposite side of part M with M upside down. Jack, you have to stop the screaming. It's completely annoying. I can't stop. It's a habit. Don't you know you can't quit habits? What do you mean? Well, I have always struggled with different habits. And no matter how hard I try, I can't stop them. Well, maybe that's because you need some help. Oh, like you are going to help me. Well, no, I'm talking about God. He can help us with anything, especially breaking sinful habits. Not that yelling instructions is sinful. No, but lying is and stealing and disobeying your parents, those are sinful habits. C can God help you stop those kinds of things? You bet he can. The kids are gonna learn all about it in today's lesson. Well, that's just awesome. So, what do you say we get back to following those instructions without the yelling? Good, good idea. Now 
It's true, guys. Sinful habits are really hard to break. And I think sometimes harder than any other habits. You know, when we have sinful habits in our lives, it can almost feel like we're prisoners to sin. But the cool thing is that Jesus is able to bring freedom from our sinful habits. In fact, the power promise that we're learning today is all about that. God wants us to remember that Jesus brings freedom. And we're going to learn about that in our lesson. So let's find out our What You Gotta Know. What you gotta know? What you gotta know? What you gotta know? What you gotta know? Hey kids, I'm Big Ray, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, kids, we're learning about how Jesus can set you free from whatever has control over you. So every time today you hear someone ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. Only Jesus can set you free. Some people have sinful habits that keep them bound up. Things like lying, Ooh. cheating, shame, shame, shame. disobeying your parents. You gonna get in trouble. Now these habits can seem like chains wrapped around our lives. And we can't break them with our own strength. We need Jesus' power to set us free. So every time today you hear someone ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. Only Jesus can set you free. And that right there is what you gotta know. I'm Big Ray, and I'll catch you on the flip side. What you gotta know. Okay, everybody, stand to your feet. We're gonna practice our what you gotta know together. It's gonna go like this. Only Jesus can set you free. Pretty easy, right? Let's try it again. Hey, everybody, what you gotta know. Only Jesus can set you free. All right, let's try and see if your parents have been listening. Let's see, parents first. Parents, what you gotta know? Only Jesus can set you free. All right, kids, let's blow them out of the water. Here we go. Hey kids, what you gotta know? Say it loud. Only Jesus can set you free. Great job. Okay guys, what you gotta know? Only Jesus can set you free. Good job. Great job, you guys. Awesome. Oh. Hey, hey, people. I promise I'll wrestle an alligator if I'm not just having a fantastic day. How are you? Well, I'm wonderful, Patrick Promise. I'm having a great day, too. Um, I don't think that I will promise to wrestle any gators, though. Yikes! Alligators are dangerous creatures! Well, I grew up on an alligator farm, so I know what I'm doing when it comes to alligators. I promise I can wrestle one down and pin it in less than 40 seconds. Really? I would never have guessed any of that about you. You grew up on an alligator farm? What was that like? Oh, uh, well, I mean, um, I didn't exactly grow up on an alligator farm, but I went to one on vacation when I was young, and that's practically the same as growing up on an alligator farm. Okay, that is a bit of a stretch there, Patrick, and it isn't the same thing at all. You know, it's a big exaggeration to say that visiting an alligator farm once when you were young is the same as living on one. Um, you know what? I would even say that is a lie. I know. Mm. I have this bad habit of lying. I'm trying to stop, but I can't. I'm just not strong enough to get free from the habit of lying. <sighs> oh, I'm gonna be a liar forever. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh. oh. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Listen, the Bible tells us that lying is a sin and sinful habits can control us, but you're right that we can't beat them on our own, in our own strength, but Jesus can set you free. I promise, Patrick, promise. You, you promise that the Bible says Jesus can set me free. I promise. God's word tells us that if the Son, Jesus, sets us free, then we are truly free. You know, isn't that wonderful, Patrick? That is awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that with me. Now, 
Now I know that Jesus can set me free from my bad habit of lying. Mm-hmm, Ooh, that's right. Joy. Joy, joy, joy. <laughs> you are welcome. I'm always happy to share God's word. <laughs> Have you ever thought about what it would be like to see a real live dinosaur? Um, yeah, I thought about it. Um, I think it would be pretty amazing, but uh, a bit scary maybe too. Why? What do you think? Oh, it, it would be super awesome. Kind of like petting a giant alligator. Oh. I did pet a little alligator when I was on the alligator farm when I was young. They are not soft at all. Well, I'm sure dinosaurs aren't soft either. <laughs> not true. <laughs> oh. Scientists have discovered that most dinos were probably covered in feathers, so that T-Rex most likely looked like a giant chicken. Oh. I can see it now. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, careful, Patrick. Chicken Rex, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> I'll be careful, I promise. Okay, all right. Um, I hope so because I really wouldn't want anyone to get hurt. Do you have any corn? I bet T Rex dinos ate giant corn. <laughs> no, I don't have any corn, sorry. Corn! Oh dear. Feed me giant corn. Oh, okay. No. Um, no. Patrick, I think we really need to get back to the service. Could you go look for some giant corn oh. elsewhere, please? Yeah, sure, we'll do. Rex? <laughs> no problem. Okay, I think that sounds good. Oh dear. Not if I'm giant delicious corn. Yummy corn. Okay. All right. Corn. Yummy corn. Okay. Yeah. All right. What an imagination, boys and girls. Um, Patrick, Chicken Rex. Uh, hope you find some giant corn over there.
Good morning, boys and girls. It's time for another Bible story. And today's Bible story is found in the book of Luke, chapters, chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. So if you have your Bible, you can open it up and follow along. So today's Bible story is found in, in Luke, and it's about when Jesus and the disciples were sailing on the sea all night. All right, so they're out on the sea all night, and as they docked on the shore, Jesus started to climb out of the boat, when suddenly... Everybody say suddenly. Yeah, suddenly a demon-possessed man ran up to Jesus. Now, think about it. If you're one of the disciples, you're thinking, hey, we're just getting off this boat. And this guy comes out of nowhere, and he's demon-possessed and just crazy out of his mind. So that's kind of the scene. This man had been possessed by demons for a long, long time and had been living in a local cemetery. He had tried many things to get free from these demons, but nothing worked. But the man screamed at Jesus and said, Son of God, don't torture me. Isn't it interesting that Jesus hadn't even said anything to the man? He hadn't even gotten out of the boat quite yet. And, and here this guy was yelling these things. The demons inside of him knew exactly who Jesus was. <laughs> and they didn't want Jesus to destroy them. They knew that, that Jesus was stronger. They knew the power of God was stronger in Jesus than what they were. See, the, limit, the, the demons living inside them knew exactly who Jesus was, and they didn't want Jesus to mess with them. Jesus asked the demons, what's your name? The demon replied, legion, for there are many of us living inside this man. Hmm. The demons begged Jesus. They said, please don't destroy us. Send us into the pigs over there. See, they knew that, that if Jesus would send them into the pigs, they might have a chance at living. Well, there wasn't a herd of pigs eating. There was a herd of pigs eating on the hillside nearby. And so Jesus commanded the, the demons to leave the man, and immediately they entered the pigs instead. <laughs> That's exactly what they did. And the demons entered the pigs, and immediately they, it drove the pigs crazy. In fact, the Bible tells us the pigs took off running and never stopped running until they ran all the way off a cliff and drowned in the water below. Hmm. The people ran into the town to tell everyone how Jesus had delivered this man from the demons that had been tormenting him for so long. They knew who this guy was. They had seen him. They had heard him. And they were excited that Jesus had delivered him. People came out, for, out, out to this place where Jesus was to see what had happened. And when the people arrived, they found the man sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him teach. The man who had been totally insane, out of his mind, and tortured by demons was totally free. This freedom was something only Jesus could give. And today, we're going to learn all about how Jesus can set you free. Obviously, you don't have demons in your, in your life like this man did. However, many of you are bound up just like this man was. You're bound by, by um, bad, sinful habits that are keeping you from being and doing and becoming everything that God wants you to be. God wants you to be free from those sinful habits today. So listen carefully to your lesson. It could just change your life. But today, we're going to start off by listening to our power verse. My name is Van. My name is Glenn. Yeah. Yeah. If we are here to pop, you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Glenn and I are power lookers. That's right, brother. Yeah. We are here to teach you a knock knock joke. Oh, I love knock knock jokes. Here we go. Knock knock. Who's that? Butternut squash. Butternut squash who? But the nuts squash my hopes of hearing today's power verse. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like that one. I like that one. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Today's power verse says, "So if the sun sets you free, you are truly free." John eight thirty six. 
Oh! Yeah. That was a very powerful part of us. It uh -huh. was, it was, yeah. Yeah, but you know what we need? What do we need? We need the boys and the girls to yeah, yeah, yeah. stand up. That's a good and idea. say the part of us with us. On the count of three. Yeah, yeah, but you have to do it powerfully. Uh, yeah, here we go. Are you ready? So, so today we're going to do eyebrow raises. Ooh, I like it. One, yeah, two, yeah, one, two, yeah. one, Here we go. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two, two, three. So, so if the sun sets you free, you are truly free. John 8, 36. Oh, that was an amazing part of us, Glenn. Yeah, you all may have a seat. Yeah, well, listen, now it's time for me and my brother Sven to let you go. Oh, yes, but until next time, we teach you another power of us. My name is Sven. And my name is Glenn. And we'll see you next time when we pop. You are! Yeah. All right, guys, we are talking about habits today. Now, habits can be really hard to break. I know. Maybe you had a habit. Oh, I heard that. Popping your knuckles. And maybe your mom has told you, you need to stop popping your knuckles. You're gonna get arthritis when you are older. Or, so you try your hardest to stop popping your knuckles, but it is so hard to kick the habit. Or maybe you have a habit of smacking your food when you eat and your mom gets all freaked out about it and she says, you better stop smacking your food. I don't wanna hear any more of that smacking. Now you've tried to stop, but you still smack your food when you eat. Or maybe you chew your fingernails, or maybe you have um, a habit of uh, clicking your tongue, I don't know. There are so many habits that people develop in their life. Now, those habits might be hard to break, but we're, they're not really gonna do that much damage, right? They're not gonna hurt your life, but there are some habits that can do a lot of damage to your life, your spiritual life. Now, those are sinful habits like lying, or stealing, or cheating, or disobeying your parents, and even more. Those habits can be very hurtful. Why? Because sinful habits can control you. So boys and girls, when you sin, you choose to become a slave to your sin. Jesus says in John 8, 34, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. That means when you choose to lie or cheat or steal or curse or give in to any other sin, you're choosing to become a slave to sin. You're choosing to become sin's prisoner. Now that means that that sinful habit is actually controlling you. Now, I'm gonna show you what I have right here. I have a pair of handcuffs. Now, these are real handcuffs, boys and girls. These are from somebody who um, works for the police department, and these are real handcuffs. Now, sinful habits, you guys, can control you, and I'm gonna do this. You become, you become sin's prisoner when you sin. When you have a, any, you are choosing to become sin's prisoner when you sin. I'm gonna, I'm gonna handcuff myself behind my back, okay? Because I'm, this is gonna represent that sin is controlling me. Let's see if I can hook these. There you go, oh, you heard them, didn't you? All right, so sinful habits can control you and keep you prisoner for a long time. You may want to change, you may try to change on your own, but all of your efforts to kick the sinful habit just do no good. I'm trying to get out of these on my own, but you guys, I can't. I can't get out, you know, because Sinful habits can't be beaten on your own strength. 
Sinful habits can't be beaten in your own strength. Sin is something that comes from the evil one, the devil. Now, just like the man who was possessed by demons in our Bible story that Mr. Mark told you today, he was not able to break free on his own. Breaking sinful habits are not possible in our own human strength. We need God's power to set us free. You can try and try to live a sinless life in your own strength, but that's not possible. Sin will keep you prisoner, ugh, like these handcuffs are on me, as long as you let it. But there is something that you need to hear. There is a way to be free. Remember the Bible story? Who was it that set that man free? He didn't do it himself. Jesus set him free. Do you know what, boys and girls? Jesus can set you free. Just like when Jesus set the demon-possessed man free, all it takes is one moment with Jesus, one prayer asking forgiveness, and we are totally set free. We are set free because Jesus can set us free. That's all it took for the man that was possessed by demons. That's all it takes for us. Come to Jesus with forgiveness and re repentance, and he will forgive us and set us free. Maybe, you guys, you've been struggling to break free from the prison of lying for several years, and you've tried and you've tried on your own, but you just can't quit. Jesus can set you totally free. Some of you may have been trapped in the prison of cussing or watching terrible movies or hanging around with the wrong friends. You've tried and tried to break from those free from those sinful habits on your own, but you are still trapped. Jesus can set you totally and completely free today. Jesus brings freedom. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I know that there might be those that are watching today that are struggling with um, bad habits and habitual sin. So Lord God, I just thank you that even though we can't lay hands on them in person, that we can pray and lift them up. And if their hearts are ready to receive from you and to repent of their sins, that you are faithful. So Lord, today we ask you, we call out to you, Jesus, that you would help them to break free from the prison of those sinful habits. Satan, in the name of Jesus, they are repent, they have repented and they are forgiven. So you cannot use that against them any longer. That he who the Son sets free is free indeed. We just thank you, Jesus, and we also thank you for helping us to stay away from that prison of sin and remain completely and totally free. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, guys. See you next week as we finish our series, Power Promises. Bye-bye.